Hi there, Graham Floyd here, and uh, for this week's weekly guitar playing video, uh, what I thought I would do is I would take the time to give you guys a quick lesson, um, actually based on some requests that I'd had um, after a few playing videos I did last week. And uh, the request was to really look at what sequences are. And that's what actually I played the other week. There are a couple of examples of scale sequences, exercises that I've um, you know, worked with and played with and given to you guys to try to develop your own playing, but uh, to really look at what scale sequences are. So that's what we're going to look at today, is I'm going to explain to you what a sequence is, specifically applied to scales. Um, you could certainly apply the same concept to an arpeggio, um, even a, a series of chords if you want to. Okay? So, what is a sequence? Well, a sequence is when we take something that has a, a, a kind of a pre-organized order like a scale and instead of playing it in um, the, the normal ascending or descending, so in order, instead of playing it like that, what we do is we create a repetitive pattern or um, a, a kind of a particular algorithm or arrangement of that scale uh, to make movement through the scale much, much more interesting and in fact even much more musical. So it starts to be played more like the way we would see it in a, in a piece of music or a solo. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that the entire sequence is what you're going to see in a scale or solo, um, but you might see little fragments of it. But for the exercise we're doing the entire thing. Okay, So let's take a look at what an example of a sequence might be. And to be honest, there's, uh, there's lots and lots of possibilities of sequences. Um, there's about two dozen or so that I like to use or that I've used over the years to train with um, and that I've used and taught to my own students, but there are certainly lots more than that. In fact, if you looked at it mathematically and tried to figure out all the possibilities, probably thousands and thousands that you could create. Okay, so let's take a look at exa an example now. I'm going to be using the minor pentatonic scale as an example to create our sequences today. Um, the uh, concept of a sequence can be applied to any scale, any pattern that you might play. Um, and as I said before, you can even use this with an arpeggio pattern if you wanted to. Okay, so behind me, on my board, I have a typical A minor pentatonic scale. This is the first position. Um, you can see if you look at our, my little fretboard diagram, this is the fifth fret, our fifth position, third fret, fifth fret, seventh fret, and the ninth fret. Now, I've marked out all of the, the note positions for the scale um, in the way that we'd expect to find it for a minor pentatonic. Now, in addition to the notes that I've marked out, I've also written in numbers for each of the notes. Now, these aren't um, the, the functional notes of the scale. So if we think about you know, the root and the third and the fifth, if you know about those concepts, that's not what this is. What these are are just enumeration for the notes of the scale. So we have six strings, two notes on every string, so that it counts up to 12. So we're just keeping track of the notes that we're playing in this position. Now why is this important? Well, this becomes important when we start to consider how we're going to create our our sequence. So if we were looking at just a standard ascending or descending version of playing the scale, we would literally just go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and then of course to come back we go backwards 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, all the way down to 1. That's what we're used to playing, right? But for a sequence what we're going to do is we're going to change up the order that we actually approach playing the scale. And uh, as I, I said before, what we want to do is we want this to be predictable. We're going to do it in a way that is repetitive. Um, I often think about this, as, or scales, as having a, an algorithm. You know, my, my um, computer science background um, outside of music kind of connects me with this in a mathematical way. So it, sequences are predictable when we're working through them. So let's look at a very, very simple example. So this is the one that I call 3S sequence. All right? And this was the very first sequence I remember learning when I was 13 or 14 years old. Um, it is surprisingly challenging if you've never done a sequence before, but it is one of the easiest ones that you can play. So here's how we do this. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to start on the first note. So we're going to play the first note, then we're going to play the second note, 
and we're going to play the third note. Okay. Now, this is where things diverge or change from our original scale. Instead of continuing on to 4, 5, 6, what we're going to do is we're going to take a step backwards. We're going to go back to 2, and then we're going to keep going forward for a little bit. So we're going to go 2, 3, 4. Now we've played another three notes, we're going to take a step backwards. So we're going to go 3, 4, 5. And we're going to continue in this manner. In fact, if I put a little comma here, to show the groupings of threes, right? it's a threes sequence, um, we start to get a little bit of an idea of what's going on here. What we're doing is we're playing up three notes and then taking a step back. Up three notes, taking a step back. Uh, another way of thinking about this would be to say that for every position of the scale, we're going to play up three notes. So we start on one, play up three. Then we go to two, play up three, right? One, two. Then we go up to the third note and we play up three, right? There's, there's actually lots of ways of approaching um, understanding a sequence. It's really just finding the one that works for you. Um, when I first started learning these, the understanding part didn't really click with me. That took um, several months of practicing and, and really um, getting used to sequences to make sense of that. But what did make sense was the physical motions, right? I, uh, I actually not only got used to the movements through the pattern, but I also used to use little verbal cues. So I'd go up three notes and I'd say back, and I'd step backwards um, and play you know, the, the, the prior note that I'd already worked through. So the, um, the thing about a sequence, and uh, when, if, you, if you start trying these for yourself, you're going to find that they're very puzzle-like. So if you're the kind of person that enjoys Sudoku or you like a crossword puzzle or these kinds of things, you'll probably really enjoy working with sequences because the whole idea or the whole thing that happens with a sequence is that you'll, you'll kind of struggle and, and fight with it for a little bit and then all of a sudden something will click. It's almost like you've found a particular solution. You've figured out the trick for the sequence. And that doesn't mean you know all the sequences, you know the trick for everything, but every time you find a new one, you go through the same process. You practice it, you work with it, you think critically about it, and then you will find the trick, right, to solve the puzzle. Okay, this is a minor pentatonic scale, 3S sequence. <laughs> Let's look at another example. So let's say, for instance, we want to do a 4S sequence. So a 4S sequence would be very, very similar to a 3S sequence, but in this case we're going to go forward four notes, and then we're going to step back to the next note in our bigger pattern. So we're not actually going to step back one, we're actually going to, it's going to seem like we're stepping back two. So here's what this looks like. One, two, three, I'm going to put in the little comma to show the repetitions of the sequence again. Then we would go 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay? And like before, we would continue on until we run out of notes to play, until we get all the way up to the 12th note in the pattern. Okay? So notice again, if we look at the first note in every grouping, 1, 2, 3, one, two, three. We're moving ahead in the pattern one note at a time, but we're playing a pile of other notes. We're filling in the space between those individual notes. Okay? Okay, minor pentatonic scale, 4S sequence. <laughs> Let's take a look at another example, although this time looking at something that moves around a little bit more. And uh, this is another very, very useful sequence to work on. Um, and it, it starts to illustrate or, or exemplify the reason why it's important to practice sequences. Um, and this sequence is what I call a jumping thirds. So in a jumping thirds pattern, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be still playing through our, our notes, but we're going to be skipping notes as we go through. So in this case, 
We're going to start on 1, we're going to skip 2, and we're going to go right to 3. Just like that. So we've jumped to our third note in the pattern. Now, it's not a, an interval of a third. Uh, if you were playing a, a major scale or some kind of minor scale where you have seven notes, it probably would be a third. But the, the third that this is talking about is the idea of we're going from the first note to the third note in the scale. Okay? If I continue doing this, we would then go to the second note, we would skip the third note, and we'd play the fourth note. Continuing again, three, skipping four, going to five. Four, skipping five, going to six. Okay? So once again, if we look at the beginning of every group, in this case there's two notes per group, because it's a smaller uh, theme or subject, whatever you want to call it, that's being repeated. One, two, three, four. Minor pentatonic scale jumping third sequence. <laughs> So we have this larger movement, we have this big leap, this big jump that we're making as we go through this sequence. And as I said, what this really shows us about practicing sequences is that it gives us a chance to explore movements through our scales that we might not have been exposed to or, or, or have practiced up to this point. If all you do is go straight up and down the scale, then really all you're going to see are, are um, what are called steps or stepwise motion. You're always going from one note to a note that is right next to it. Now again, if we're in a, in a higher position, we might go to a note that's below it, 7 to 6 or 7 to 8, but we've missed a whole bunch of possibilities like 7 to 5 or 7 to 3 or 7 to 4. So practicing sequences forces us to really see some of these things. And when it comes to music, if you really go in and analyze good melodies or, or uh, famous melodies, you'll find that they don't just use stepwise motion, um, and in fact they don't just use jumping motion, they use a combination of the two. So it's this variety that we want. It, it creates much more organic, much more musical music. Okay? So, um, we can actually go to you know, a number of other possibilities with the jumping concept, jumping fourths and fifths and sixths and sevenths. Um, I usually don't recommend going anything beyond the octave. It's, it's not really necessary. If you want to do extremes like that, you can try it. But um, even just going through thirds, fourths, and fifths will get you quite far in your understanding uh, of jump, jumping or, or um, leaps through sequences. The last example I want to show you guys is a thematic sequence. And a thematic sequence is one that instead of following some basic music principle or, or simple you know, intervallic movement, what we're doing is we're creating an interesting theme. Okay? So as an example, let's say the pattern that we're going to do as our, as our thematic sequence um, goes like this. I don't have a name for this. This is just, I'm, I'm kind of making this up as an example on the spot. Um, as I said, there's lots of sequences out there to try. So let's say we go one, three, one, two. That's our, that's our theme, our repeating pattern. Okay? So we go to our starting note, in this case it's one, we jump up a third, we go back to the one. We go up to the second, we go back one. So that's one time through. If we then repeat this, starting on the next note of the scale, we would go, okay, two to four, back to two, to three. Okay? So again, we've, we've created now something that really isn't based on a specific interval or a specific movement, but is just more, more random as a starting point. Okay? Now, you don't have to do every combination of this, but what you can find or what you might find very helpful is if you find a uh, a particular movement or theme or combination that you're learning in a song, you can turn it into a sequence, right? So, you know, if, if you found uh, a, an interesting little lick or pattern from a solo and you thought, oh, that's, that's really cool, I, I'd like to make that part of what I play, um, you know, all the time, this is a way of doing that, right? You take that little idea and you turn it into a sequence and you push it through the entire scale, okay? 
Uh, let's take a look at just one more step forward. So let's say we go to the three. So we're going to skip four, go to five, back to the three, and then to the four. So again, there we go. There's our one, two, three overall movement through the scale as we go through it. Okay. <laughs>